May God bless you abundantly. Every time we base our life in what is written here, if you want to be successful, if you want to grow up in the presence of God, if you want to have the assurance, the certainty of your salvation, you have to base your life in what is written here. It's not just a matter of reading or meditating, but much more than that. What God needs from us the most is to practice, is to obey what is written. Maybe you are a person who reads the Bible every day. You enjoy it. You enjoy the reading of the Bible. You, 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 you know the stories. You know the names of the heroes of faith. You know about the miracles performed by our Lord Jesus. You know how many books uh, there are in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. Very good. There is nothing wrong with that. But my question is, are you practicing what you read here? Are you obeying what is written here? Maybe you talk about it, you preach about it, you tell others about it, but in your personal life, you don't see it, you don't practice. And then, what is happening, or what is the consequences of what I'm telling you right now? You are not going to see your life growing up, moving forward. God is here. If you want to know our Lord Jesus, he's here in this world. He's here. His life is here. But if you don't practice, if you don't follow it, if you don't obey it, you are deceiving yourself and you go nowhere. I am bringing to you right now a testimony. It's going to take around from 10 to 12 minutes. But it's a testimony of two assistants. They, they are not young. They are not teenagers. They, they, they are aged. But to see how they behave before our God. See how much they trusted in the word of God, in the promises of God. They are engaged. And... They are planning, they are preparing themselves to get married in a future time. But to see their example, especially you who are single, you are young, you want to, to build up your, your family, you want to get married, which is right. But to see what God has done in their lives. I'll be right back after that. Good afternoon, my name is Mr. Richard Rowe. Before I came to the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God, you know, my life was very miserable. I used to drink a lot, I used to gamble, I used to smoke. And I saw the, um, the, the program on the TV, and I said, you know, to myself, when I hear people giving their testimonies, I said, I can be like those people too, give a testimony, seem like them. So I go to the church, and when I go there, you know, I overcome all my problems, the gambling problems, the drinking problems, you know, and the family problems, you know, I overcame them. So I started to, you know, to seek God more, you know, and then I get saved, you know, my soul was saved from all that I have done, you know, and I repented. And now I'm in the church, you know, as an assistant, you know, Doing the, doing the work of God. So just like how I overcame, you can overcome too. So that's my testimony that I have to give. My name is Pearl Williams. I am an assistant from the Universal Church. I was have a problem with the sickness of thyroxine and I make a chain of prayer and then I give myself to God 
and then I, the sickness what I had, I overcame from it. And now I'm giving myself in God's hand. I'm doing the work of God, and God has delivered me to set me free from all the difficulty and all the problem that I have was having. And the 5th of March, 1915, and then that's the time I met Mr. Rowe. Well, that day, well, somebody did introduce me to her, and um, I go to her, and I speak to her, I told her that somebody introduced me to her, and then she was very busy, you know, at the time. So she, I couldn't speak to her at that time. She just gave me her number, and we were looking for a paper to write the number, we couldn't find any paper. So she write it in my hands and say, don't lose it, because if you, lose, if you lose it, you're not going to get to me. So, you know, from that, when I go home, we begin to, I begin to call her, and we begin to talk, you know, having conversation with each other. And then now we, we, we get closer and closer, you know, we're talking about, you know, mostly about what we learn in the church and about the teaching that we get from the pastors and so, and so on. And then, you know, from that, we get closer and closer. Because I didn't know that we would come so close, you know. From talking to each other, you know, and um, respecting each other and having communication with each other, you know, from there we start begin to understand each other. And then now we start to get closer and closer to each other, you know. And then we begin to grow with each other. And, you know, one of the time I said to her, then, Miss Pearl, you know, do you think we can, you know, get married? You understand? And they say, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a long time we are talking, so we understand each other. So we can go ahead. You understand? So we are planning. He asked me, say, he want to marry me. So I was, you know, I was shocked. I, did, I was, didn't respond to him at the same time. And I said to him, I will think about it. And then I go home and I think about it. I said, well, if I am a woman of God and God has chosen somebody for me not to live on my own for the rest of my life. So I make up my mind and said, yes. I told him, yes, I will marry him. So from that time we start to go out, we meet, we have lunch and, we, and then he come down and I come up. So when we have lunch and the time to go go home, he, I take him to the bus park and then I go home. Your salvation is very, is the first step. You understand? So when you have your salvation and you um, see, you know, the guidance of, of God, you know, He will guide you in the way. You don't have to be in haste, you know. Just be patient and um, you know you date a person, you can date the person and you the person talk, you know, and then you, know, you find out the ways of the person and then you get closer and closer, you know, mm -hmm. and then now, you know, we have to respect each other and communication is the key. We learn a lot from Miss Pearl because we communicate and we listen to her and she listens to me, you know, but we have ups and downs, but you know, communicate, we communicate together. So we can, you know, talk over it and, you know, and get over the situation. You know, but communication is the key and respect. We have to respect each other, you know, and we don't have to be in haste. Let, let God guide us in the way we must go, you know, because you're going to have ups and downs. Mm -hmm. But some of the things, you can, you know, you have to slow to anger. Because if, you, if, if, you, if, if somebody says something to you and you're going to get upset, you know, you have to think about it before you before you speak. Because if you speak as the person says something, you may say the wrong thing. So we have to consult, you know, listen to the spirit, what the spirit said to us. And then, you know, it, it will guide us in the right path we must go. So that's the way me and Miss Pearl go. At the end of the day, God is with us and He is the one who will guide us and protect us in the right way. And if we are a man of God and a woman of God, we should respect one another and we listen to one another. Whatever problem we have, we will solve it. And so long we have God before us, 
that is the important thing. So I have to obey him and he obey him. He is the man of house, of the house, so he's a key to respect one another. And the young assistant, they should not rush into anything. They can have a relationship, but they must not rush into anything what they want to rush into. Because God never rush in anything. He take his time to do things. If he need want to build, if he want to build us, he build us in the right and proper way. So we must not rush in any relationship. We must take the time, look at one another, talk to one another, and listen to one another. But the word of God is more important because if we are listening to the bishop and the pastor to what they are saying and we put it into practice, then we cannot go wrong. This is what I have to say for the young people. They can get married because age is not a limit. So I am in an age, but I don't look at my age. I look at God and I look at the relationship that God gave to me to have somebody beside my side. So that's what I ask to give the young people for. When we surrender our life to our Lord Jesus, what happens? Everything has to change. Amen. And to be in our Lord Jesus means to surrender your whole life on the altar. This is a process. It's not just a matter of saying, Lord, I surrender my life to you, and that is it. It's a process that includes repentance. You have to turn our back on what is wrong, on what does not belong to God. Amen. Come help me here, but come over here, come over here. Both two of you. Look at us here. This is my old life. This is the life I used to live during the time I was outside. This is the life of lies, addiction, prostitution, you name it. Then I come to church to look for what? What is it? This is the new life. And that's where we stand. Between old life and new life. When I face, when I keep my old life, what am I doing to the new life? I'm despising it. And this is the problem of many. Though they come to church, but they are still attached to what? To the old life, all the friends, all the places they used to go, all the thought, all the habit, all the addiction. How can I break it free from it? Should I say a prayer only? Is that enough? It's not enough. I have to repent. I have to turn my back to my old life. Oh, Holy Spirit, do what we cannot do for your people, my Father. I wish I could enter their bodies, their mind, to put inside of them what you have put inside of us. But who are we to do that? Only you, Holy Spirit, can do it. This is your work. We cannot do your work, my Father. We are doing ours. Do yours now. Transform everyone here. Even this person who is here for the very first time, who doesn't know how to express herself before you. On the 21st, 
we are going to have the consecration of his souls. What is consecration of his soul all about? It's going to be a day, just one day, for you, assistant, to bring to our God one soul. You are going, you are going to, you have time to look for this soul. I'm talking about somebody who is fully depressed, somebody who doesn't sleep during the night, somebody who, who tries whatever he or she, she can to, to find a job, to get a job, and it doesn't. You're somebody who, who has no peace at all, no peace in their heart, no peace in their mind, no peace at the home. Sometimes they, they rather stay outside or at work or in the church or in the street or in a friend's house because she knows, he knows, once they step inside of the house, they are going to have a problem. There is fight, argument, misunderstanding, addiction, sickness, disease, every bad thing you name. We can help this person. We don't need to do too much. The only thing you need to do is to bring this person to the church, to the closest one. You who are watching me there in, Mon in, in Montego Bay, Mandeville, you don't have to bring this person to Hagley Park because there is a branch there very close to you. So start to look for this person. I'm talking about one single person. Just one. I'm not talking about 1,000. I'm not talking about 100. I'm talking about just one soul you are going to bring on the 21st any meeting can be 10 a.m 3 p.m 7 in the evening even 7 a.m if there is 7 a.m service in the branch you go and this person this soul is going to be consecrated and delivered in the hands of god and god is going to do to this person the same thing he has done for you. I've got no doubt about it. to what is written in the word of your God. Amen. Amen. And if you obey what is written, God is with you. Amen. Understand that? Amen. Yes or no? Yes. You who are coming back, you who left the church one day, you are more than welcome back here. And I'm going to pray for you here. You who are coming for the first time, like me, all of us here, also one day came for the first time. Agree with me? I also came for the first time one day, and I, I, I'm here, and I'm going to die here on this altar. Amen? Amen. So, give continuation, seek for the Spirit of God, because He'll make you strong. He'll transform you. Amen? Amen? He'll give you courage to go ahead. He'll prepare you to serve in Him. Amen. Understand that? Amen. How many of you would like to do that? Who would like to serve God? Wave your hand like this you want to serve in him? Yeah. Is this desire inside of you? Yeah. Yes or no? I'm bringing to you, there is a verse in the Bible. You don't have to worry about opening your Bible to read because I'm going to post this, this message here. Just one verse. Just one. See what our Lord Jesus said. If anyone 
anyone. It means pastor, bishop, assistant, members, YPG, etc. Anyone. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him, my father will honor. He's not saying my father will bless. He said my father will honor, which is different from being blessed. Honor is something special. It's not for everyone. But there is a condition for him to honor us. And the condition is, first one, to serve him. And we serve God when we help his people, when we evangelize, when we heal the sick, when we cast out demons, when we give a hand to those who are in need of help, when we bring a soul to our Lord Jesus, as we are going to do on the 21st, we are serving him. When we clean up the church, when we help the pastor in the meeting, when we serve the Lord's Supper, when we pray for people, when we fast for them, what are we doing? We are serving him. And the second, the second thing that we have to do to be honored, we have to follow him. And how do we do that? How do we follow our Lord Jesus? When we live our life in obedience to what is written here. When we manifest the character of God, not only inside of the church, which is very easy, because inside of the church, everyone looks holy. Everyone looks good. Because they also, they worship the Lord. When the pastor prays, everyone prays. When the pastor invites people to come to the front, they come. So inside of the church, it's easy to be holy. Inside of the church, it's easy to manifest the character of God. But not only inside of the church. We have to do it principally outside of the church. Which character, which fruit have you produced in your life when you are at home, when you are at work? To follow our Lord Jesus is not just a matter of carrying a Bible or wear a uniform. It's much more than that. It's to obey what the Word of God teaches. is to live our life according to the Holy Scriptures. It's to forgive our enemies. It's to pray for those who hate us. It's to give the other side of our cheeks. It's to go extra miles. It's to do for others what we would like someone to do for us. This is how we follow him. And once we do that, once we serve him with our best, when, when we, we put our all in what we are doing, even if it's something very simple, either somebody's around or we are by, us, by ourselves. And if we follow him exactly as it is written here, I've got no doubt that in the right time, he's going to honor you. The father, not the man, do not expect to be honored by men. Do not do anything to be considered by men, to please men, to gain points with men. 
nor to be honored by men. Our honor has to come from God. Our honor has to be given by our Lord Jesus Christ. If you expect to be honored by men, sooner or later, you are going to be disappointed. You are going to be put into shame because men fails. Men fails. But our Lord Jesus doesn't. Whatever you do, do to please him. Don't do anything to please yourself, to please the pastor, the bishop. Whatever you do, make sure you do it to our Lord Jesus Christ. And in the right time, he's going to honor you. He's going to bless you. Not with what you want, but with what you need. I want to pray for you right now. If it is possible, close your eyes. Holy Spirit, this prayer is not for healing. It's not for financial situation, financial problem, marital problem. But it's for this assistant, this lady, this gentleman who is watching this program and wants to please you, wants to live his life according to what is written. He doesn't want to deceive any, anymore. He doesn't want to be one person inside of the church and another person outside of the church. Oh, Holy Spirit, guide him. Show to him what he needs to do, what she needs to do, step by step, to manifest your character in this world. Also, my Lord, I pray for those who are going to bring one soul to be consecrated on the 21st. Give wisdom, anoint his lips, her lips, put a word in her mouth every time she evangelizes somebody. In Jesus' name, you say amen. Share the link of this program with a friend. Tell your friend about the consecration of his souls on the 21st. Feel free to write to me, assistant in focus one at gmail.com. If you have question, if you have a testimony, an experience with God, it's my pleasure to read and reply. God bless you. See you next time.